Happy Wednesday to you, Aaron from PhoneDog.com here. And if you told me a year ago that LG was going to make a great high-end smartphone in the U.S. market, I would have probably said, you're crazy. That's never going to happen. Because if you remember back, the LG Ally came out in April, April, May-ish of 2010, or was announced at least in April or May of 2010. One of the worst smartphones I've ever worked with. To be frank with you, I think LG realized that. I think the sales numbers reflected that. And they went back to the drawing board and they created something a little bit better. And if you remember, the Optimus line came out a little bit later, the mid-range smartphones. But thanks to the carrier adoption, thanks to the, even the regional adoption, you know, by U.S. Cellular and by a couple of the other carriers, you know, Metro PCS, Virgin, things like that, those really took off. And I think they thought, okay, if these took off, we can create a really great high-end smartphone. Fast forward to CES, the LG Optimus 2X came out. And now it's available in the U.S. as the T-Mobile G2X. Now So I reached out on Twitter and said, you know, guys, what do you want me to cover on this device? What do you want to see in this review? And I received a couple of interesting responses. So this would be kind of a user-generated portion of the G2X review. So a couple of people said, you know, I'm just going to read off some of them. Does it have an LED notification light? No, like I said in the first part of the video. That's one of the downsides. It does not have a notification light. Obviously, like I said, the two real cons for me, the speaker quality, well, yeah, it's kind of eh. And then the fact that there's uh, there's no notification. So, and music output power was actually another question. So, answer kind of both of those with one stone. Uh, notification light, none of that. And then uh, music output in terms of speakers, not not huge. So, the Tegra market in depth, they're intrigued by. It. Let's take a look at that. Let me find it. Tegra Zone Games is what it is. And so, you have Spotlight, you have Games here. And this is kind of, you know, they've kind of hooked onto this train. Everybody wants to create their own market. T-Mobile wants to have a mall, you know, T-Mobile mall. NVIDIA wants to have Tegra Zone. Android wants to have the Android market. Like, it's becoming a little bit overkill, in my opinion, to have all these different markets, all these different places where you can look at things, download, install. You know, it's a little bit overkill, particularly for people that aren't familiar or too familiar with a particular platform. So you can see here are some spotlights of games that you can play on this device. I mean, keep in mind, this is almost a mobile gaming platform because of it having a super fast uh, dual core processor. So let's go into games. Let this load up here. Dungeon Defenders, for example, T-Racer HD, Riptide, History, Backbreaker. Let's actually do, I'm not a big gamer, but let's do, and I'm going to be terrible at it and you're going to laugh when you watch the video. But anyway, Need for Speed Shift. Let's try this. See if we get like a free trial or something. I think, actually I want to say it's included on the device. There it goes, Need for Speed Shift. And then you listen to something like that and you're like, the speaker quality is pretty decent. Like it must be, you know, T-Mobile TV. Okay, 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 okay. So here we go. And you can see, I mean, look at the graphics of that. I mean, that's, I don't think I'd ever imagine seeing that on a phone. Let's see. Steer left and right. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Release. Okay, so I automatically accelerate. So you can see. This is how I drive in real life. Wait, not like that. Oh, man. Let's crack the screen. I mean, look at the graphic quality of that, though. I mean, that's that's part of the Tegra 2 processor running fast. I mean, no lag whatsoever. Like, look at the city, little city things in the background. I mean, the image quality is video game quality. And so you get the idea of what that's like. I won't bore you too much with that. But that's what you can find in the Tegra Zone. A lot of games you can download to really show off the Tegra 2 processor, how well it works with games. Now, another person asked about the responsiveness of the touchscreen. So this is an interesting one because... It, uh, I haven't, when I first got the device, there was a little bit of a learning curve because I felt like the touch screen was a little bit jerky. Now, those that have seen my Atrix review, they're going to call me out there and you're going to say, well, you said the Atrix was laggy. Now, there's a difference between jerky and laggy. The Atrix was laggy. It was consistently laggy across the board and more so when you were doing particular things. I've noticed from time to time, this one's a little bit jerkier. It was when I got it out of the box. Once you get used to it and once you realize that it's really not an issue and you learn how to operate the device, I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. So you can see, I mean, it's running through right now without any jerkiness or, you know, any issues whatsoever. But there's a difference, there's a strong difference, in fact, between 
the lag that you saw in something like the Atrix where you're scrolling through. And a lot of that's moto blur, don't get me wrong, because it has a Tegra processor as well. Um, you know, a lot of that's lag, and a lot of that is, uh, you know, just the fact that moto blur was pre-installed on the device. But this one, you know, every now and again, like little things like I'll scroll and like that, I mean, it won't scroll all the way up, but you know, you just learn how to operate the screen. It's just a different operation. It's not that anything's wrong. So the responsiveness, oh, you know, overall to me has been very good. I haven't had any issues with responsiveness once I learned how to use the device. And it's like any device. I mean, you go from the iPhone to the Droid X, there's a different level of responsiveness on those two devices. So that's, uh, something to keep in mind. So let's scroll up. Let me see here. I'm looking over here on the side. Uh, I have not had a chance to test out any of the docks designed for this device. So no dock chances or tests yet. If I do get my hands on those, I'll do a separate video demoing uh, one of the docks. So another question was about battery life. You know, I've been using this as my personal device uh, for a little while now, since roughly since I got it, and uh, it has a 1500 milliamp battery. So 1500 milliamp battery, which sounds you know, given the fact that HTC has gone on this trend of doing 1200 to 1400 milliamps, it sounds uh, much better, but by the same token, 1500 milliamps in a dual core device with a four inch display, yeah, that seems kinda, you know, not the greatest, you know, whereas something like the Atrix has a 1930 milliamp. I've been very impressed with battery life. I mean, just to show you, I pulled it off the charger at 8.30 this morning, and uh, it's at 43%, and I've used it pretty heavily throughout the day. I receive emails from two different accounts, and constant emails, you know, work emails, and I've been sending several picture messages uh, that I put on, I actually put some pictures on the phone and sent those as picture messages, a ton of text messages, and, uh, and made some calls this morning. I'd say about 45 minutes worth of calls. Uh, downloaded some apps prior to shooting the video, and uh, browsing the web, and it's at 43%. That's pretty impressive to me, dual core processor, um, you know, device that runs fast, big display, and it's still at 43%. Given the stuff I put it through today, that's pretty impressive. If it was mid range or moderate use, I'd say, you know, avoid it. But it's been, I've been pleasantly surprised. It's been pretty, uh, pretty impressive. So let's see, what's the next? Okay, LG, does, do they have any plans to announce gingerbread? The question is, um, you know, whether gingerbread's coming to this device. They say it is. I think the, uh, the last I heard it was on track for a summer launch. I don't know if that was a rumor, if that was confirmed from LG, so don't take me at my word with that, but I think it was summer. You know, now that said, I mean, like the G2, it's a stock build of Android, so I, I wouldn't imagine it to take that much to get it up to Android 2.3, save for adding in some of the T-Mobile programs that you see on Android 2.2. So it uh, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too much. Now let's see, cover call quality. Now I did cover this a little bit, call quality and speakerphone quality. Somebody's asking about that. Call quality, I've been very impressed with. Uh, great call quality. No, I took it to T-Mobile Dead Spot in North Charlotte, actually on the way to uh, an appointment early this morning, and uh, call quality was very good. It was choppy for about a half a mile, but I didn't have any uh, issues holding the call. And once we got out of it, the call uh, resumed and was perfectly fine. Speakerphone, like I said, you know, I've, I've definitely had better devices, but it's certainly doable. It's not a negative on the device by any means. And then, uh, you know to me, like in T-Mobile TV or things like that, it's a little bit low, and I may have missed a uh, part of T-Mobile TV where you could turn the volume up through the application itself. Maybe I just missed that, but actually we're going to go back in and see if I did miss that. Let's see here. I don't see any option to turn. Let's see. Yeah, I don't see anything where I can like turn the volume up from the actual menu, so I think that is as loud as it goes. Yeah, it looks like it, so... It wasn't, it wasn't just me being an idiot. It was actually, that's as loud as it goes. So certain parts you see it too low, other parts you see it pretty reasonable. Let's do speed test, let's do quadrant standard to get an idea. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the quadrant standard scores. They are uh, pretty pretty impressive, not Tegra Zone. Let's see, there it is, quadrant standard. We'll run the full benchmark. And I mean, absolutely impressive quadrant standard scores, particularly when you compare it to other devices on the market right now that are running single core processors. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, I, and you've heard me say this on video, I really like the Thunderbolt, but if you're comparing just speed to speed, this one uh, blows the Thunderbolt out of the water in terms of overall OS speed, uh, not network, but OS speed and, you know, hardware. So we'll see here, it's running through, I mean, you can just see it's running through all the graphics pretty quickly. And like I said, this is optimized, you know, this processor is made by a company that specializes in graphics and specializes in uh, things of that nature, so... 
it's loading up now and you can see there's the planet, little planet things, DNA strand it's gonna pop up shortly, I mean pretty impressive speeds put it that way, benchmark results, do you want to proceed? 2,384, now that's actually one of the lowest scores I've seen, 2,384 usually averages between 2,400 and 2,700 so it's a free, flippin' fast device, 2,384 on this particular test. Like I said, though, I've seen it between 24 and 27. That's actually the lowest number I've seen, and maybe because we have some stuff running in the, uh, in the background. Let's take a look at speed test. Actually, the app was just updated, so it looks like the iPhone app now, and I don't know why. I think the Charlotte server just died. I'm not sure what happened to it, so uh, <laughs> I might have to load it up on a nearby server, so take these numbers, uh, well, as always, take these numbers with a grain of salt because we are in rush hour right now and I'm right beside the uh, the interstate. But we're going to do it in the Greensboro. Let's see here. We're going to do it in megabits per second. Put it down. And we're going to do a speed test. And pop it up here. And let's see. See what happens. Live life on the edge. Pinging is complete. Let's see what we get. Okay, looks like we're going to get up there. Good. Okay, up the, ooh now. Okay, download speed about 7.9 megabits per second on the upload. A little bit lower on the upload, it looks like. Let's see. 0.84 megabits per second. Let's run one additional test. And so overall, you know, in conclusion, with the G2X, my opinion, my take on this, it's the best Android device on the market right now. That's not to say the Bionic, if it comes out, or the LG Revolution, or the Evo 3D, or you name it, is you know is going to be isn't going to be a better device. But right now, if I were to walk into a store and buy a device just based on hardware, just on hardware, not on network technology, I would go with the G2 Plus. I mean, you're looking at speed test numbers: 5.14 megabits per second. It's a pretty solid HSPA Plus network. Upload speeds aren't too great, but uh, it's pretty solid as well, but to me, best device in the market for the money, 200 bucks, you get this device, it works incredibly fast, it has a good design to it, it has a nice display, and all in all, I think it is the uh, the best, the most well-rounded uh, best device in the market if you can get past the fact that the speakers aren't so great all the time, and there's no notification LED. Much more coverage to come on the T-Mobile G2X on phonedog.com, we're gonna do a bunch of dog fights with this, the Thunderbolt, the Inspire, the MyTouch 4G, maybe the Galaxy S 4G, a lot of different ones in the coming days. So stay tuned for those. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away a lot of iPads, a lot of phones as part of our colossal iPad 2 and smartphone sweepstakes. You could win at facebook.com slash phone dog. And be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Phone dog underscore Aaron. Didn't mean to hit the camera. Phone dog underscore Aaron. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts on this device, and I'll do my best to answer those. Thanks so much for watching as always. We'll see you next time.